Good morning. Hey, what is one of the most simple lessons in Jeremiah's ministry? Our reading today is at Jeremiah 13, verses 1 to 11. So let's get straight to it. Thus the Lord said to me, Go and get yourself a linen sash and put it around your waist, but do not put it in water. So I got a sash according to the word of the Lord and put it around my waist. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, Take the sash that you acquired, which is around your waist, and arise, go to the Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole in the rock. I So I went and hid it by the Euphrates, as the Lord commanded me. Now it came to pass after many days that the Lord said to me, Arise, go to the Euphrates, and take from there the sash which I commanded you to hide there. Then I went to the Euphrates and dug, and I took the sash from the place where I had hidden it, and there was the sash ruined, it was profitable for nothing. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, In this manner I will ruin the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem, this evil people who refuse to hear my words, who follow the dictates of their hearts, and walk after other gods to serve them and worship them, shall be just like this sash, which is profitable for nothing. For as the sash clings to the waist of a man, so have I caused the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah to cling to me, says the Lord, that they may become my people, for renown, for praise, and for glory. But they would not hear. So God instructs Jeremiah to get a sash, put it around his waist, don't wash it, wear it for a while, and then take it and stow it there over by the river. He hides it there, it's damaged by the elements, and now it's going to be one of these enacted parables, one of these object lessons that God wants uh, and that Jeremiah does so many times. So the sash is useful to the wearer while he wears it, but it's become useless apart from the wearer. Notice the lesson, left alone to itself, it becomes useless. It was God's plan for the house of Judah to cling to him for renown, for praise, for glory. But they chose, oh, we're doing our own stuff. Consequently, they were useless to the kingdom. You know, the people wouldn't hear. They were felt like they were rich. They were increased with goods. They had everything they needed. They're doing just fine. Thank you very much. They even believed that God was kind of a relic from their uneducated past. And they were beyond that now. They had risen higher, thank thankfully, for their many degrees, or at least whatever they or at least whatever they counted for status in those days. So yes, they've progressed, because that's very much where we are in many of our minds today. We think we're independent, we think we're autonomous, we think we can improve on the way of living that's been delivered to us, and that's a sad outcome. We're, our, our purpose isn't found in ourselves. We're designed, we're made in God's image. Our purpose is found in serving the Lord Jesus. It will never be found in great success. You know, we can never be independent from him. We exist on his terms not on our terms, on his terms. And he's called us to exist in communion with him. All of his good he offers us as a gift to us. He offers us life. Life is moral beings in a moral universe. He has wonderful plans for us. So let's keep that in mind. And as the choice was Judah's choice, so the choice is our choice. Will we try to do it all on our own or will we do it God's way? Anyway, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help your people to be right. Help us to cling closely to you for, for the glory that not really for us, Lord, for your glory. And then I think we'll be doing fine. Help us, Lord, not to feel advanced and ready to throw away your things. Please, Lord, save us from ourselves. Save the people in our schools and universities from, our, from themselves. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer as, we, as we're praying this day. In Jesus' name, amen. So remember, we're called to cling to God in good and add his goodness to the universe. Everything else is going to end in a kind of a big mud puddle of disaster. So God be with you today as you avoid that silly puddle and serve the Lord Jesus.